The Reds played 18 innings against the Pirates yesterday and managed an offensive onslaught of one run. Yes, you heard me right. One lousy run against one of the worst teams in baseball. We will talk about exactly how that happened. Uh, we will talk about Luis Sessa, the starting pitcher experiment, and the ever-evolving bullpen. We're going to discuss the arrival of Aleo Lopez and my Bob Euchre impersonation. We've got all that and so much more right now on Locked on Reds. Let's go. You are Locked on Reds, your daily Cincinnati Reds podcast, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. You are Locked on Reds with myself, Jeff Carr, and my co-host, Stephen Offenbaker. We are lifelong Cincinnati Reds fans that have turned an addiction for this team for better or worse, into information for you on today's Locked On Reds podcast. This is part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks again for making us your first listen. As always, we're free and available on all platforms. And on today's episode, we are going to break down the doubleheader. We're probably not going to talk a lot about hitting because, well, there wasn't much hitting to talk about. We are going to talk about pitching, pitching, pitching. There's lots to look at when you're talking about an ever-changing bullpen. Plus, a thought about one hitter in particular, a guy who is announcing himself and maybe inserting himself into future conversations in Alejo Lopez. But we must start first with the guy who started first last uh, yesterday. And that is Luis Sessa because the Reds are experimenting with something here, Steve. And, and to be honest with you, I like the posturing. I like the idea. I'm just not necessarily sure that it's going to work out. You know, in a season, Jeff, where the mantra for better or worse has been, where are you going to go? I mean, I think you can also say, you know, what are you going to do? Uh, the, the pitching yeah. that we thought was going to be such a bright spot that was going to be such a huge bonus for the Reds this season, <laughs> that train derailed a long time ago. So, you know, on one hand, I really get some of this experimentation and some of the things that they're tinkering and trying. And in the case of Luis Sessa, you know, he wasn't really the lights out guy we thought he could be pitching out of the bullpen. So I guess it makes sense to maybe try and mix it up and stretch him out a little bit and see if maybe doing things differently in the different uh, types of uh, activity you do as a starter versus reliever and maybe help to break him out of his funk. Well, and once upon a time before he was traded to Cincinnati, the Yankees were kind of messing around on whether he's a starter or a reliever and, and trying him out in different spots there. In fact, he mentioned he was talking about um, after yesterday's game, kind of the difference that it is getting prepared for a game, whether you're a relief pitcher or a starter and the challenges that it presents. And here's him talking about that. I feel good. I feel good. I, I work in really hard in between in every outing, you know, it's different because I need to change my routine, like a reliever to start it. So I need running more, more like jogging time, more like long sprints, you know, more weight room stuff with my low body, my upper body. So I really, really working really hard for, because the chain in between the season, in, in the middle of the season, sorry, is really hard to do for reliever to start it. But I just continue working hard, but I feel good, you know, I do I do this before in my old minor league career. I, I do this with a, my first year with, in big league with the Yankees. So I just so so glad for this opportunity. I just try to continue to do my best job when, when I got the opportunity to pitch. I prefer to get started. So that's the reason I try to work hard and do my best every time I have the opportunity to pitch. You know, Jeff, there was something kind of important in there that I don't think we always think about when we talk about moving a pitcher between the starting rotation and the bullpen starter versus reliever. You know, we always talk about having to stretch out a reliever's arm, having to build up their innings, having to get them ready to pitch, you know, four, five, six, seven innings. But, you know, I think it was important to note that a lot of what 
Luis Sessa talked about right there was leg strength and building up his legs, doing increased running, doing increased weight work to build up that leg strength to be able to pitch for that many innings. You know, and we've heard guys like Cowboy and Chris Welch talk about these kind of things on the broadcast. But I think that really brings the point home that, you know, when you ask a guy midseason to make that switch, his body, not only his arm, but his entire body is not really conditioned for that starting pitcher process. Yeah, yesterday, kind of as he started, he, he said earlier on in that interview that I didn't have as part of the clip, he talked about that's the first time he's thrown over 90 pitches. And we're talking about a dude who his usual workload included 30 to 40 pitches max, and most times much less than that because he's only pitching one inning. And if he's very efficient, who knows? It might be 15 or 20 pitches at that point. So when you look at the absolute change that it is, it's worth noting that, yeah, okay, where the Reds are, this is the point in the year to do that. And I appreciate the fact that they weren't waiting or they weren't trying to do this in May. They did this in August and September and things like that. And if we want to look at this real quickly, there are a couple of things. When you look at Luis Sessa as a starter, he has 23 and a third innings pitched over his five starts. He's got five point. He's got an ERA of 5.78. So that number in and of itself isn't necessarily impressive, but you're also talking about some starts that have much less than your typical starts, like two, three, four innings. So you give up a run or two there, here or there, that ERA is going to balloon. However, there's still some other signs that you worry about, like homers allowed and things like that, that I, I still think that obviously the jury is out. There's still going to be lots more of this experiment that has to take place, but I don't necessarily know how long the leash is for something like this. Well, I know this much. It's probably as long as the 2022 baseball season because they don't have anybody else. I mean, really, they're... Yeah. Uh, he, I don't think he has to worry at all about them saying, you know what, we're putting you back in the bullpen because they don't have anybody else that can step up at this point. Uh, they really just need for Sessa to finish out this year as a starter, whatever that looks like. Yeah, and, and you know, I mentioned the 90 pitches. They really tried to stretch him out and get him to six innings yesterday, and it just didn't work out. Coming into the sixth inning, he had only three earned runs allowed, so he really could have – um fought through that, but again, gave up another home run. I mentioned the home run stat. He has seven home runs allowed in 23 and a third innings. And by doing a little bit of maths, and maybe I did this wrong, I don't know, but in my small, tiny pea brain, I thought, okay, if we extrapolate this out to the 199 innings that Bronson Arroyo pitched in 2011, when Bronson Arroyo set the franchise record for most home runs allowed in a year at 43, Luis Sessa would allow 59 home runs in 199 innings pitched. So yeah, that's got to change. That's yeah. If that's what we're talking about, um, then yes, the experiment will end at the end of this year, and he'll go back into the bullpen. Those are home run numbers that Mike Miner would be jealous of. That's yeah. impressive. <laughs> <laughs> Mike Miner would be like, "Oh wow, man, he's giving up a lot of home runs." Uh, but yeah, that's uh, that's uh, those are some tough numbers. But I do like this. He's definitely shown great control, and it was something that he kind of almost belabored a little bit how many times he started off a guy with a first pitch strike because in that game yesterday, the pirates were very aggressive. And he said in a scouting report that their lineup is typically very patient. So he was trying to come at them in the first pitch and they were hitting it a lot. In fact, I talk about that control. He has only four walks in his five starts. So that's something well, it's, you like to it's, see. It's hard but to it, walk guys when they're hitting home runs off of you. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm trying to look for some <laughs> optimism. Maybe. But yes, it's. I mean, look, Luis Sessa could be a valuable dude as a starter relief pitcher type hybrid guy. But at the end of the day, is that really what's going to happen here? It's kind of hard to say. Listen, there is clearly a major confidence problem with many of the guys down in the Reds bullpen, Jeff. And we're going to talk about that here in just a minute because we all know that a lack of confidence can have major impacts. In fact, guys, listen up. Sometimes your bat can be as ineffective as the Reds' bats were yesterday against the Pirates. But don't worry, there's some help, and that help doesn't even involve Alan Zinter. That's right. This episode is brought to you by Blue Chew. Look. 
we all know that confidence can take you far in life. Whether you are talking about getting in the box or climbing the mound, it's especially true in the bedroom. So when it's time to step up to the plate, that's where Blue Chew comes in. Blue Chew is a unique online service that delivers the same active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis, but in a chewable tablet and at a fraction of the cost. The process is simple. Sign up at bluechew.com, consult with one of their licensed medical providers, and once you're approved, you'll receive your prescription within days. The best part? It's all done online. So no more visits to the doctor's office, no awkward conversations, and no waiting in line at the pharmacy. With Blue Chew, men everywhere are excited to see the postman because when your package has arrived, your package has arrived. So if you could benefit from some extra confidence when it's time to perform and you don't want to invite Alan Zinter over to your house, you simply need to chew it and do it. And we've got a special deal for our listeners. Try Blue Chew free when you use our promo code locked on at checkout and you pay just $5 for shipping. That's bluechew.com promo code locked on to receive your first month free. V visit bluechew.com for more details and important safety information. And we thank Blue Chew for sponsoring this podcast. All right, coming up tomorrow, we will be talking about Nick Lodolo uh, and how he will try to play the role of stopper and help the Reds avoid a series sweep at the hands of the Pittsburgh Pirates. Will he be able to lead them to victory? We've got you covered, and we'll let you know on tomorrow's episode. All right, Jeff, I hate you so much right now for making me do that. Ad read. <laughs> but let's talk about the bullpen. You're muted, Jeff. That's a four game series sweep in three days. Uh, just what a weird, what a world, what a world, what a world. Yeah. Let's look at the bullpen because David Bell decided that the way he would attack the second part of that double header was to throw a bullpen day. And it actually kind of worked out. I mean, heck, they only gave up one earned run in the entire nine innings of that game. It's just the lineup did absolutely nothing for them. They only had one hit Stuart Fairchild hit a double down the right field line. There you are. That's it. That's the tweet. Uh, but when you look at this bullpen, it's a mess that's taken on a mind of its own. And, and we're kind of to the point, I, I think we alluded to this about a month or so ago of like, you know, I think we're to the point where we just want to see some guys get called up and see what they have for the Reds. And uh, that's, that's what we're looking at right now. Well, guys are definitely getting called up. Listen, I don't have any idea who's in this bullpen right now. It changes so much. Listen, I can't keep up with it. I don't think David Bell can keep up with it. Derek Johnson probably has no idea who's down there. Uh, but circling back to that one hit you mentioned, if you want to watch Jeff and I have a little bit of fun, I mentioned my Bob Euchre <laughs> impersonation up at the top there in the cold open. It's out on Twitter right now. Jeff and I recorded a little tribute to uh, Bob Euchre and poked a little fun at the Reds offensive prowess against the pirates yesterday but this bullpen jeff you're absolutely right i mean first off we're having to do a rundown sheet that has the phonetic pronunciations of all the pitchers because we have <laughs> no idea who they are so let's talk about ray noel s penal becoming the 35th pitcher to appear for the reds this year you heard me right 35 and is this kyle dowdy kyle dowdy becomes the 34th pitcher to appear for the reds this season i don't think that's good the uh 2012 reds have entered the chat and they are concerned yeah you're talking about the last time that the reds were really good in 2012 they had 17 total pitchers steve and only two of those guys or in two of those guys only appeared in one game so you really only had 15 pitchers oh and by the way that 15th guy only appeared in three games so it was really just 14 guys this year it's just everybody if if you are able to throw a ball plate word and you're in the reds organization you have appeared in at least one game for this red side. And yes, these brand new dudes, Kyle Dowdy, he's a guy who was a non roster invitee to spring training has stuck on the Louisville bats roster all year long, kind of waiting for this moment. I think he probably saw it after they went three and 22, like, Oh, I might have an opportunity. And he did. He actually pitched all right, two and two third or two and one, uh, two and a third. Um, it kept the scoreboard clean. Did allow a couple of walks, but hey, 
that's all right. Kept the scoreboard clean. And then uh, Reynal Espinal in the second game allowed a couple of hits and the only run. So, yes, he took the loss. And if you guys want to get mad about that, whatever. But he pitched two and a third innings as well. I kind of thought that Espinal would be the starter for this game. But, again, that's kind of like, you know, shuffling deck chairs on the Titanic or whatever. Pretty much. And, listen, you know, I make mention that they're the 34th and the 35th pitcher uh, to appear for the Reds this season. Uh, just in case you missed it on the broadcast, Jeff, that brings the total on the season to 65 players <laughs> to have appeared on the major league roster in the year 2022. That is a major league high this year. And there's a very big chance that it could increase in number. Study up. At the end of the season, we're going to have like a Locked On Reds Sporkle quiz to see just how many of these names you can name. We need to have our buddy Ken on from uh, uh, at Obscure X Reds on Twitter and see if he has gotten approval yet to expand the budget oh, for jersey his, purchases. Yeah. I need to know if you know. I, I challenge uh, Ken. I know Ken listens faithfully every day. Ken, I need to. I need you to commit. Go a tweet it out. I need you to commit that you are going to buy a jersey for every red that appeared in the 2022 baseball season. I know this. We're we're going to be able to find Ken at the Authentics booth at uh, Reds Fest coming up here at the beginning of December because he's got a lot of negotiating to do. There's going to be a lot of guys that that Authentics booth. The market booth... is flooded. Oh it my is gosh. Flooded. <laughs> That Authentics booth guy is going to be like, whatever. I don't even remember this guy. Here, yeah, take it, Ken. It's fine. All right. All right. Listen, Jeff, it's not all bad, though. It's not all bad. And That's I want to give you an opportunity to talk about your guy because I know how excited you get. So, you know, I know it's his brother, but I, we need he needs to come up with some kind of cool trumpet thing because I need that for him, too, because talk about your boy. Well, and we're taking steps here, Steve. We actually had a nice video intro on the right field scoreboard whenever Alexis Diaz came into the game in the ninth inning. Wasn't as much pop and circumstance because, let's face it, he was trying to keep the deficit at one run or whether, or rather than um, keep the lead at one run. But still, yes, give me an epic intro for him. In fact, we were kind of talking about this in, uh, at the game yesterday and saying, you know, maybe, maybe he does it a little bit differently, not trumpets. Maybe he does saxophones or something. Maybe he's got Kenny G makes him a little bit of walk in music there. Slow jam. <laughs> he's going to, he's going to, he's going to slow jam the save. Mm. He's just going to really mess with the hitters mind. They're going to be like, what the heck? Yeah, no, let's, let's go with that. But no, he was good. He lowered his season ERA to 1.8. We are talking about the bona fide bullpen ace of your Cincinnati Reds. Definitely this year, for sure next year. I think that he is a guy. He's going to follow in his brother's footsteps. He's not going to be a guy that is subject to the whole relief pitching is a fickle thing. I think he's going to keep this up. He had a couple of strikeouts, just made O'Neill Cruz look absolutely foolish on a slider that he threw him. That was just Mm. Every time he throws that slider, I just want to go, mm, chef's kiss. Let's go. Absolutely beautiful stuff from Alexis Diaz yesterday in the night. And I don't think we've seen the best of what he has to offer yet, mm -mm. Jeff. I mean, you talk about the number at 1.80 ERA in his rookie campaign. And you have to remember that he got slapped around a little bit when he first came up. I mean, he was kind of working on some things and trying to figure it out. And he's clearly done that. So I'm excited for him to have, you know, the opportunity to come into next season being kind of identified as, you know, arm 1A down there in that bullpen with that mindset and see what he does with that over the course of a full season. That's definitely some, a bright spot to really, to really cling a hold of as we start to look towards 2023. And also one other positive last night, Rivar San Martin threw two and a third innings, allowing just one walk, no hits, and he had three strikeouts. Kept the scoreboard clean, beautiful outing by him. Steve, Rivar San Martin has thrown 37 appearances, or he's pitched in 37 games this year. Started some of them, relieved in most of them. How many of those appearances do you think he's kept the scoreboard clean? Well, I have the show notes in front of me, so I know the answer. <laughs> I do know, I do know, Jeff, that he has allowed zero runs in 27 of 37 appearances. And I, I want to I, I wanna dial in on that for just a minute because there was a time where, 
you go way back to the beginning of this season, it looked like he might not even be a major league pitcher. And they right. sent him down. And when he came back, he was a different guy. And I, I, I really think he is to be commended for going down to Louisville and working on some things and, and trying to get dialed in and then being successful in doing it. Because he's another guy now that as we start to move towards 2023 and talk about what a future Reds bullpen looks like, I think that he definitely has a case to have a role in that bullpen. He may not be arm 1B even or 1C, but if you're looking for a middle innings guy right now, I have no problem with him being on this roster and being the guy that you run out there uh, in the sixth or seventh inning uh, to bridge that, to, to, to bridge from your starter to guys like Alexis Diaz or Lucas Sims yes. back on this roster or the return of TJ Antone or whoever else they might pick up in the offseason. Uh, he's a very useful guy to fill that role. And you need guys like that. You cannot build a team without guys like that. Plus, he's a lefty, Steve. Only lefty in this bullpen. Well, Justin Wilson comes back hopefully healthy and ready to go. But yeah, Rivar San Martin has shown himself to be a very valuable piece of this bullpen. He's going to be a guy that's going to be a lot of fun to kind of break down his year because there's a couple of outings that if you take those outings out of his season, his numbers look phenomenal as they should, because he has been phenomenal out of the bullpen. Oh, absolutely. And you know, it's, I think it's that time of year, Jeff, when you, you place a call to the bullpen and the guy comes running out and a lot of your fan base looks and is like, Huh? <laughs> Who is right. this guy? There's going to be a lot of unknown names coming out of that bullpen, but it's, you know, a few weeks left in the season. Let's see what they got. Keep it tuned right here. We're going to let you know who you don't know. And speaking of what you don't know, Alejo Lopez has shown a lot of promise lately and is inserting himself into planning conversations for the Reds. I'm sure of it. We'll tell you why. Coming up next. Before we do that, though. Want to let you know that you can follow us right here on YouTube. If this is your first time watching us, thank you so much. I hope that, you know, I'm, I, I think I'm coming across all right. I think I'm looking all right. Yeah, I think we're good. All right. <clears throat> yeah, and if you can see it on Twitter, you can see our, or if you can see it on YouTube, you can see our Twitter handles. You can follow me at Jeff Carr with three Fs. You can follow Steve at S. Offenbaker with two Fs. And you can follow the show at Locked On Reds. There's uh, no Fs in that. At least not in English. All right. Uh, coming up here, we want to jump into some talk with Alejo Lopez because he has been absolutely phenomenal this year. In fact, I'm really not sure that everybody has noticed this because I know when I put this note into the, into the notes, you looked at it and you were like, huh? Because it's true of all reds hitters with 100 at bats or more. He has the second highest OPS plus. That's right. I, yeah. I feel vindicated. I, you know, people shouted me down early on when I said I wanted to see more playing time from Ale for Aleo Lopez. And yeah. everybody was like, no, we've got this other guy. We've got Kyle Farmer. We need to see Jose Barrero. We need to see all of these other dudes. And, you know, I was certain if he was given an opportunity with, consistent playing time he would show us something and he has done exactly that he has played his way into being in the conversation for having a role on this team next year now i'm not saying that he's going to be a starter although if he keeps hitting like he has been hitting jeff he could be a starter because his numbers are great as you mentioned second highest ops plus on the team with 116 now he trails only jake fraley jake fraley right now at 119 with the ops plus and you know while we're talking about jake fraley jeff uh you know fraley took a pitch to the head uh, in i think game one of the doubleheader mm -hmm. yesterday and it looks like he's going to be okay but we do have some video from jake fraley talking about that bean ball let's hear it yeah, everything's good so far. Um, so thank the Lord. Uh, so it was, you know, it could have been a lot worse. I mean, straight in between the uh, C flap and yeah. the brim, so right in the temple. So clearly, no ill effects. He's talking to the he's talking to the media after the game. There's no bruising. There's no uh, craziness going on. So I think Jake Fraley is going to be fine and continue to be in this lineup. Uh, you know, that being said, you know. A one-two punch right now of Fraley and Lopez is pretty good. 119 OPS plus from Fraley, 116 from Alejo Lopez. Over the last two weeks, Jeff, that's 15 games of play. Alejo Lopez's slash line, are you ready for this? I'm going to hit you with some numbers. Slash line of 409, 435, 5. 
91. And that's the key right there for me at the end, because I think that early on, whenever Alejo Lopez was getting like an at bat a week, it was like, okay, he slaps a single on the left, slaps a single on the right. It's like, okay, is this guy just a slap hitter? Like, really, how much more are we going to want to see of this guy? 591 slugging? Sign me up. And I know he got his first career home run a couple of days ago. That was awesome to see. The fact that he's got that kind of power. He had a warning track fly ball in the second game of this doubleheader that Honestly, off the bat, I thought, okay, maybe this is something. So, you know, that could be one of those dead balls that Rob Manfred put in the bag for the Reds Pirates game here. But when I look at Alejo Lopez, I'm with you. I want to see more of him. I was a little bit perturbed and not necessarily because I was like micro analyzing as to who's going to give the Reds the best shot to win the game. But I was a little bit perturbed whenever David Bell brought him out of the game at the end of the second game of the doubleheader for Kyle Farmer to face a right-handed pitcher of which Kyle Farmer is not good at hitting. And you had Alejo Lopez who has shown himself to be kind of good from the left side of the plate. Sure. He's over three in that second game, but I say all that to say this. Leo Lopez has been one of the most consistent bats in this lineup, not just for the last 15 days, but pretty much since the trade deadline, since the roster started just convulsing and, and we needed guys to fill out spots. Alejo Lopez has been a constant and I think that that needs to be celebrated. And I think he definitely deserves a continued, uh, a continued audition next year. Definitely right now for me on a meter of like scrub to starter, I think he's like a super utility guy on a successful Cincinnati Reds team. You know, it's, it's not very often that I miss Dusty Baker being around, but today was <laughs> one of those days because Dusty would play guys based on his gut. And he would go with the hot hand. And clearly, uh, Aleo Lopez was the hot hand over Kyle Farmer. You know, all of the analytics and and splits thrown out. At the end of the day, Aleo Lopez was the hot hand. And for whatever reason, David Bell sat him down. You talk about Lopez being uh, consistent since the All-Star break. You're not wrong. If we take a larger sample size, Jeff, 30 games instead of 15, we do a full month. His slash line is still 329, 388, 452. He has been the model of consistency for the period of time you're talking about and you know i think you're absolutely right i would have loved to seen him had the opportunity to continue to hit in that game and i do want to see a lot of him to finish out this season and if if he finishes like he's playing right now jeff he absolutely deserves to be in on the conversation for you know probably your first guy off the bench maybe your second guy off the bench and could foreseeably play his way into being you know the next man up in case of injury for a, a lot of significant playing time in 2023 as we continue to await the the stream of prospects that will be coming mid 2023 and beyond it makes me think of a bench player who i had really grown to like and i think there was quite a few reds fans that had grown to like and the fact that he's no longer with the organization after multiple injuries and that's max schrock like I'm thinking of Alejo Lopez in the Max Schrock role, a little bit less pop, a little bit better contact. And yeah, that's the kind of guy that I want coming off the bench first. If he can continue this kind of production, not to say that he's always going to hit 311, but still to be able to produce and to be able to provide quality at bats off the bench, that's the kind of guy that you need on a successful team. You know, it's it, it's what we had hoped for, Jeff. You and I have talked about this all season long, that with consistent playing time would come solid production while playing at a variety of positions and providing value to the Reds. And that's exactly how it's playing out. So that is a positive that we can look at as this season continues to march towards its merciful end. And another exciting thing to look at today, Nick Lodolo on the mound for the Cincinnati Reds. I'm very much looking forward to this to see if he can be a stopper. It's a little bit more of a mental test than it is like, you know, whether we're going to look at numbers or, or stuff like that. But how does he handle that? Because the reds are sliding. The reds are skidding here. They just got to win seven games out of these remaining games to avoid a hundred losses. But if they're losing to the pirates like this, like what are we talking about here with seven games? Because they got five coming up against the Cardinals and that is looking very ominous. If they're going to go to St. Louis with their tail tucked between their legs after losing four straight at home to the lowly Pittsburgh. And I say lowly because the pirates have played 
like 200 ball since the all-star break. Like they have been bad people. They haven't won back to back games in like six, like six weeks before they came to Cincinnati. And and now they won three in a row. Yeah. This (laughs) might be the most embarrassing series of the season for the Reds. I think just when you take into account the opponent and how the opponent's been playing, as you mentioned, since the all-star break, uh, this is probably one of the worst series performances on the year. Enter Nick. Lodolo, and I'm looking forward to seeing what he's got. I think that will be where we wrap this up with our excitement for looking at Nick Lodolo. Coming up tomorrow, we'll break down that start from Nick Lodolo and what we hope is a Reds win and an avoidance of a four-game sweep at the hands of the Pittsburgh Pirates. Thanks so much for making Locked on Reds your first listen of the day. Now make your second listen, the Locked on MLB podcast. MLB expert Paul Francis Sullivan brings you humor, passion, and his unique perspective on every team in the league, along with the biggest stories from around baseball. You can follow the number one daily league-wide podcast, Locked on MLB, on the Odyssey app, YouTube, or wherever. You get your podcasts. All right, Jeff. Lodolo is on the mound tomorrow. Uh, We are screaming towards October, not quickly enough. And what can the people count on from us the rest of the way? And count on us to let them know who on earth that is coming out of the bullpen. They can count on us to be excited about Alejo Lopez and what he's got the rest of the way. And they can count on us to be locked on Reds every single day.